What is up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Uber Cold Garage. On this week's episode, we are getting to bug to be a roller. So very, very excited. Uh, it's not 100% yet, but it does roll on all four of its wheels uh, as of now. So enjoy the video uh, and see how I got to the point that it is now. Uh, we are also getting into our new project. So customer dropped off the car to me uh, and a whole bunch of parts. So very excited about this project. Uh, I hope you guys really enjoy it. It is quite a bit different. Uh, it's still a Subaru swap, but it's not the standard Subaru swap that everybody's been doing. So I hope you guys enjoy that. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave those in the comments or you can email me uh, the descriptions down below. If you are interested in a swap or anything along those lines, uh, you can email me or DM me on Instagram and I will get right back to you. Uh, the business part of this entire thing is right at the point of finally getting started. I am going to order all of the stuff to uh, make my carbon parts here in the next day or two. Uh, so if you guys have uh, a Volkswagen and are interested in some custom carbon fiber parts, uh, hit me up and we will try and work out uh, what you want and how to get it. So uh, I'm going to start off small and then work my way up. But that is definitely something to look forward to here in the near future. I am also working on quite a bit of other things, uh, building a website and all that stuff. So uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and hope you guys enjoy the video. Okay guys, so super excited about this. Uh, this whole Shabille back here is kind of just a, a, a test to see how everything works back here. Uh, as you can see, I have the cantilever right here with the bearing in it. Uh, that's just bolted onto a scrap plate. Uh, went ahead and bent this up just to get it a little bit further away. Uh, this is actually a sleeve with a bolt through it. So that's just tack welded to the sleeve. Uh, eventually this here will get cut off and uh, that'll get a plate on it so then it slides in and makes it look nice and clean. Uh, also planning on uh, trimming some of this, putting a gusset plate on top and a bracket on the back that goes back to the back side of the ring. Uh, this is just a stud that I tack welded on here. Obviously a nut. Uh, so this is basically just proof of concept just to see if I'm headed into the right direction. Uh, all the heim joints work out great. So everything's pretty loose still. Uh, I haven't fully tightened everything up, but uh go into the car you can see i got everything up here all mocked up uh got a bolt through here it's too long i'll end up trimming that same thing with this one but it does shift through all the gears it's uh it's a little difficult because everything's not tight like even even these bolts down here aren't tight, so there's slop in the actual mechanism down here. But uh, it does go into all of the gears. I will end up verifying that. I'll get the car started up, put it up on jack stands, uh, run it through the gears, make sure that all of them work, uh, reverse and all that work good. But uh, my proof of concept does work. So if it's, if I can start it and run it through all the gears and it does work, then I'll go ahead and finish all of this stuff out, get it all fixed up, uh, make it nice, clean, get it painted, all that stuff. So that 
right there is a huge, huge step further forward. Uh, I am still currently working on front suspension stuff, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to push really hard to get all of the front suspension stuff done, uh, finish up the small couple bits on the passenger side rear, make sure the car is all leveled out, because uh, as of right now, it is sitting towards the passenger side like a quarter of an inch lower than the driver's side. So I need to go over, take a couple measurements, see what's going on with that. I think it might just be the coilovers are set a little bit different. So I got to do that and finish up front suspension. And we should be able to drive this thing. Okay, so I went ahead and painted up the main bracket. Uh, did a couple little tweaks to it, shaved it down so then it's got a nice profile and good. Also went ahead and welded in a spacer right here uh, to hold the swing, the cantilever. So all of that's all set up. Uh, the other bracket here, all I did was added a gusset to it and that is painting is getting painted as well. Uh, waiting for the paint to dry to get that back on. Uh, I'm going to shave down a little bit more of this. Uh, that way it cleans it up a lot more. So once I get that all set up, I will show you guys that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump up to the front. So you can see here... Uh, I have my steering rack is completely disassembled again. So with the fuel cell sitting where it needs to sit, uh, I am going to move the steering rack up, up a little bit, make sure that it is the same angle as the actual steering shaft. That way I don't have any binding or anything like that. And uh, I'm also going to take the u-joints and align them uh one of my instagram guys gave me a a video it kind of explaining steering and stuff like that which was really nice so thank you very much uh so i'm gonna adjust all of this get it right where it needs to sit and then steering should be done and then we'll move on to finishing up the front suspension I'm still undecided on what I'm going to do with that, but uh, it, it's time to do it, start figuring it out. Uh, I also got my front brake lines, my stainless steel brake lines. So basically I have everything to get this car rolling. So it's time to really jam on it uh, and start getting everything all situated and set up where it needs to be. So let's start jamming.
Well, after a whole bunch of tacking, moving, cutting off, tacking, moving, cutting off, a uh, very repetitive process, uh, I have taken a couple scrap pieces of uh, brackets that I had laying around. Uh, I went ahead and you saw me get the steering rack tacked into place into its new location. Uh, it is a lot better where it is. Um, I am still going to have to modify uh, the spindles. So I got the spindles uh, all set up where they need to be. So uh, control arm, top control arms, they're roughly where they need to be. Uh, I need to pull the shock off or the coilover off and raise up and down the tire to see how much uh, camber and all of that toe in and all that is. But uh, the way that it is, it seems like it, it is working the way that it is now. Uh, you can see here I have these plates on here, so I'm going to have to cut off the tie rod end piece of the spindle and move it in so i'll cut some cut some and then re-weld it back in further back either that or what i might do probably what i'll end up doing is re-drilling another hole back here uh, and then cutting off this front part re-rounding it that way i don't have to worry about this weld ever snapping uh, I know it won't, but just to be on the safe side, I'll probably end up doing that, which will actually give me more steering angle anyway, because as of right now, when I turn full lock, this almost connects into the uh, upper A-arm. So this front suspension has given me quite a bit of problems. So now that I kind of got an idea on things, now I can make brackets. Uh, I am going to go with this style rather than that style uh, with the tabs. That way I have all of this will be fully 100% adjustable. I'm going to figure out a way to make the actual arm here adjustable up and down, which uh, in a race car is pretty substantial uh it changes quite a bit with the car with braking and uh acceleration and stuff like that the angle of the top arm will drastically change the car so i'm gonna figure out a way to make those adjustable uh and then the lowers are basically right where they need to be which is nice the steering shaft uh, like I said, I went ahead and synchronized them. So those work out good. Don't mind any of the gross freaking welds because, uh, like I said before, it was a tack and then cut it off and then move it and then tack again. Uh, so a lot of this stuff is getting cut, cleaned, and will be made properly. But, uh, if you... Look in here, the steering works great. Uh, I know a lot of people were concerned about it being uh, pretty heavy. So uh, it is heavy, but uh, you guys also got to remember that this car basically as of with the body and everything on it weighs roughly 1400 pounds so the car doesn't weigh anything uh so steering's a tiny bit heavy but it's not heavy enough to uh be concerned about it so now that this stuff is on uh, i can make brackets start getting all of the brake lines finished off and ran uh and finish up the couple little pieces on the rear suspension and then we should be able to at least drive it down the street. Uh, the shifter works out great. I will show you that in the next clip real quick. 
uh, I still didn't run and grab bolts, so I need to uh, do that still. And then we will also hop into the uh, into the next project. But uh, the car is officially a roller, which. Uh, this car has not been on four wheels in an extremely long time. It rolls nice and smooth so far. So let's uh, finish off these bits so then we can drive this dang thing. Okay, guys. So I wanted to show you guys the, the shift mechanism that I had have built here. Uh, I am missing these screws. So I need to go pick these up. I ended up going with a longer one. That goes all the way back here. That way I can get a wrench in there to tighten it all up. Uh, and then I need one for this bottom bottom piece and one for here too. Uh, the ones that I ended up buying were too short. So I'll uh, go ahead and show you guys this. Uh, we got first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and reverse. So this works out really, really nice. Uh, the shifter's super tight. Uh, definitely a sh very short throw uh, mechanism. So very, very, very excited about this. And this was a big project off of my plate. Okay, guys, so here is the next project. Uh, this is a 1970 Ghia, uh, same year as mine. Basically a pretty bone stock start. Uh, pretty decent car, straight body-wise. Uh, has a ton of parts that he had already ordered for it so we got axles uh subaru gears uh engine mount and trans mount uh brakes a whole bunch of other stuff so uh i'm gonna go through and get a lot of this stuff done uh it's on gti wheels it's got porsche trailing arms in the rear uh willwood disc brakes all of that stuff uh, and then as you guys can see completely bone stock bare chassis ready for a swap so I'm gonna go through we'll clean all this stuff up uh, kind of basically the same thing as uh, I did with Zach's car minus uh, minus paint so, if you come in here, uh, we got a six-cylinder Subaru motor. So this is a this is the EZ EZ three thirty. So you guys can't really see that, but it is a EZ motor, which is pretty cool. Uh, something way different, six-cylinder. Uh, we got a five-speed. Subaru Trans here. Uh, it's got the Subaru Gears uh, reverse pinion in it. So I got to go through and fix a couple things or finish off a couple things inside the Trans. Uh, he also went ahead and ordered the entire wiring harness and ECU from out front which is awesome because I love those guys. Uh, they're really, really good guys, really easy to work with. They uh, are very helpful as well. Uh, and then down here, we got a brand new throw out bearing, uh, clutch disc, clutch and flywheel, brand new. So that stuff will make its way onto the motor here pretty quick. I'm gonna go through and uh, clean up a lot of the motor, double check everything, uh, start sifting through wires just to see if there's anything missing. 
but uh, I think what I'm going to start with is I'm going to, now that the bug is a roller, I'm going to pull the bug out of the garage. I will pull his car back in and then pull the bug in behind, behind his car. Uh, so the garage might be a little tight of a fit here pretty quick, but, uh, should be a really, really cool project. So we'll get into the transmission and then start getting that fitted in the car. And then we'll, uh, hop over to the motor, get that bolted in onto the transmission and start getting that test fit as well. And then we'll start getting into the cooling system and all that fun stuff. So really excited about this project. Should be really fun. So stay tuned for that. I'll uh, probably do separate videos between the two cars. And I also have uh, one more customer that wants me to do a couple little things on his car. So hopefully... Uh, I can get this one knocked out pretty quick. That way uh, I can get that one in. And then I actually just got an email last night about another one. So uh, things are definitely starting to proceed forward with this business venture that I'm starting. So very excited about that. And, and hope you guys enjoy the entire series and what I am doing. Uh, if you guys ever have any questions or anything like that, don't hesitate to to shoot me an email. I am one of those kind of people that would like to try and help absolutely everybody that I can with anything that I can. So uh, definitely trying to help everybody push their own project further along. Uh, whether that be having me build it or uh, me just giving advice. So stay tuned for this build. Okay, guys, so that's all I have for you on this one. Uh, we will be pushing the bugs out and playing musical cars uh, here pretty quick. And then we will jump on to both projects. I am planning on knocking out quite a bit of Ryan's car uh, probably this upcoming weekend, probably Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, I have off that way. Uh, I can knock out as much as I physically can. And the bug, we will probably do a couple little things during this weekend uh, on the bug, but I'm gonna try and keep the videos separate. Uh, that way I can build a playlist of Ryan's car uh, that way they don't kind of get mixed up, kind of like I did with Zach's car and the bug. There was a couple mixed videos in there, uh, but big things are coming, so hope you guys enjoy this, uh, and are excited for the things that are coming up, so until the next time, peace out, guys.